Don't you ever give up. Is there a giant in your life that seems to always be around and you can't slay it? You can't just sit there and give up. Give and give in. Then you just lose the battle. Do you want to lose the battle or do you want to be successful? And so. Uh, there comes a time in life where you gotta grasp the bull by the by its horn and go for a ride. That's the say so. So clamps down, get a grip, and hold on for life. When you feel you're not good enough to fight life's battle, look to the Bible story of David. His armor armor was too big, he was too small. He was too young, but God helped him get on by and overcome. Ask yourself these questions. Are you at the point in life where you just don't care anymore? Do you want to give up and quit? Are you losing grip on life? See, God's people wax, wax in and uh, battle they say I'm tired it's church time but I think I'll go go next time well I'm gonna tell you this there ain't there might not be a next time and so but I don't think I'll go tonight maybe next time it's it's too hot it's too cold well let me see let me tell you this. I can see people that work getting tired. But if you didn't work or you don't work, you shouldn't be tired. And that shouldn't be an excuse. If you lay around your house all day, do nothing but sit there, you have no excuse of being tired. I can see if you actually have done something throughout the day. But if you don't, don't use being tired as any excuse. I don't want to hear it. Neither does God. And, uh, there's two times you should go to church when you feel like it and when you know. And when you're sick, church is the best hospital to be in. And there may not be a next time to go to church. And you think it's hot down here? It's even hotter in hell. The heat is unbearable. The gnashing of the teeth is unbearable. The smell will probably be raunchy. And uh, if you grow weary and afraid, don't be. God's got your back. And he's in front of you and beside you. He's just grasp onto the Lord's unchanging, unfailing hand. Grab onto his promises that he had promised you. And uh, he walks in front of you and beside you. And so you're covered. We're more than conquerors. Nothing is impossible with God. See, David may have been tiny and small, and his, his covering may have been too small, his armor, but he had somebody bigger, stronger, more powerful than anything in this world that had his back. His name is Jesus. And I'm a father.
Enid smite the giant Goliath on his own, but by the might of Jesus Christ. And uh, see, there's time, and see, there's times even in my life battle where I lost grip, I got worried, and didn't hold on to the promises of God, and I didn't grasp on to the word and truly trust Him. I didn't really trust anybody at the time. Let's realize something, everybody, that when we're in a conflict, bad situation, those are not times to have, that's not time to have down times. See, when you're down to nothing, grab on to God's enchanting hand, see what He can do for you. Stop counting on yourself and everybody else to see you through. Pick up your head. Sometimes we do need a pause in life and elevate where we are and see who we really are so that we can determine where we stand we can see who we we can see whether we need to pray or read and maybe have some alone time with God and sometimes we can get wrapped up in life and cares and the worries of this life. Let me tell you something. If you trust in, in God, nothing is impossible. He's got your back. He's got, he knows everything that you need. He knows every prayer before you pray. Sometimes he just wants to hear things from your mouth. He wants to know that you know the word of God. Did you trust him with all your heart? If we find out we're running on empty, shouldn't we do something about it? Don't you sense something is wrong when you wax faint and not pressing in? When you're not fighting the good fight, 2 Timothy 4 7 says, Um, <clears throat> First Timothy four seven. Says four seven says. But refuse profane and old wives fable and increase thyself rather unto godliness. Oh, wrong oh, one. Second Timothy, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And 8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. 9 says, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. And 10 says, Says for Demas has forsaken me, having loved the present present world, and in departed unto the 
Crossing to Goleta Titus onto the Malta. I didn't say those right, but it's alright. And so um, How are you doing in the fight? Are you gonna press in or give up? Or are you gonna go out with a bang and go forth for Jesus and allow him to help? Are you gonna show the devil that Jesus is alive and he is working through you? Or are you gonna stand there with your head down and act like you're defeated? Or are you gonna get up and go forth in the mighty name of Jesus? First Samuel 1747 says in all this assembly shall not shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle of the Lord's and she will give you into our hands so Jesus does not fight and does not win the battle with sword and spears but through his kindness his love it's everything. Alright, well, hope you guys enjoyed. That's all I have for tonight. Alright, love you. Peace out. Alright. Jesus loves you. Dear Lord, I just pray that you touch him. Father God, let this not only let this word not go void, but let them hear it. Let it sink deep down into their heart. Let them go out. Go forth and tell others about Jesus Christ. Jesus, my name, Lord, you are so wonderful. Father God, let them not feel so alone. Let them know that you are there. All they need to do is call upon your name. In Jesus, my name, Lord.